In this video, we're going to learn about the light microscope. By the end of the video, you will know how to identify the need for microscopes, describe the principles of a light microscope, and describe the limitations of light microscopy. So what is a light microscope and why do I need one? In the picture, you can see living organisms. You can see a dog, you can see grass, you can see dandelions, there's clover in there. There are many, many different organisms. However, these organisms are made of millions of cells which cannot be seen with the naked eye. Therefore, to study the structure of these cells, we need to use the magnifying power of a light microscope and then we can see how the cells differ between different organisms. So what is a light microscope? The first light microscope was attributed to Anton von Leeuwenhoek in the 1600s. He found that grinding and polishing glass made objects different sizes when you looked at them and from this he could now look at microscopic organisms such as bacteria and cells from his own body. Today the microscope has become more sophisticated. It still has the basic principles of that first light microscope with the different lenses. However, we have now got things like condensers to control the amount of light that can go through your sample. And we have got your coarse and fine adjustment knobs to focus that sample. So how does a microscope work? Well, it works by light. So the first bit of a microscope to be able to see your image is right at the bottom and that is your light source. The light source shines through a condenser and the condenser can be used to control the amount of light that is passing through your sample. So if you find that it's bleached and you can't see anything but very bright white light, you can close that and let a little bit less light through and you can see it. If it's too dark, you can open it and it lets more light through, allowing you to see it. Your sample or your object that you are looking at is held on your stage by your slide holder and they are on generally on a slide. The light passes through your condenser, through your sample and into your objective lens. The objective lens light then travels straight up where there is a mirror in that box area you can see right on the top of the microscope which then bounces the light up into the eyepiece lens which is where you look through and you can see your object. If your object looks blurry you can focus the microscope using the coarse adjustment knob which moves the stage up and down and then you can use the fine adjustment knob to focus that so you can see it in minute detail. So we've seen how a microscope works, but you need to know some microscope definitions as well. So have a go at writing out the definitions for image, object, resolution, and magnification. Pause the video whilst you do this, and then you can check your answers. Okay, here are your answers. So the first one, image, refers to the appearance of an object or material when viewed under a microscope. So this is what you see through your eyepiece lens. The object is the material that's put under a microscope. So for example, if you're looking at cheek cells, that object will be a cheek cell because that is the material that you have put under a microscope. Resolution is the minimum distance apart that two objects can be in order for them to appear as separate items. And magnification is how many times bigger the image is when compared to the object. And you can work out magnification using the equation image size, which you will have measured from, say, a drawing, over actual size, which is maybe the actual size of your sample. And you can rearrange the equation to find different parts. So, for example, you can find actual size by rearranging your equation. But we will do that in another video. So how do you know the magnification of a microscope? So if someone has asked you to work out actual size and you need to know the magnification, how would you do that? Well, you take the microscope that you've been working with and you find the magnification of the eyepiece lens. On this particular microscope, it's times 10. You then find the magnification of your objective lens. On this particular microscope, it is times 40. To work out the magnification, you multiply the magnification of the eyepiece lens by the magnification of the objective lens. So for this microscope, it is 10 times 40, so your microscope gives you times 400 magnification.
This means that your image size is 400 times bigger than the actual size of your object. However, micro light microscopes have limitations. Here is a list of statements about the light, light microscope. Can you sort them into advantages and disadvantages? So they are small and portable. They have a maximum magnification of times 1500. They are cheap to buy. You can see in color and they have poor resolution. Pause the video and see if you can sort them into advantages and disadvantages. Here are your answers. So your advantages are they are small and portable. You can see in color and they are cheap to buy. This means that we can use them in college because they're small and they are cheap. And because you can see in colour, you can see different structures and you can stain to see different cells. However, the disadvantages are they have maximum magnification of times 1500 and poor resolution. So it's very difficult to distinguish between two items that are close together. To highlight this, here is an animal cell. This is a human cheek cell seen under the light microscope. It has been stained with a blue dye, and because you can see in colour, you can see this. However, the only objects you can really make out are the nucleus and the cell membrane. Whereas here is an animal cell that has been taken using a transmission electron microscope, which has much higher magnification and much higher resolution. We will cover electron microscopes in a different video. Here you can see all the different organelles in the cell. You can see the nucleus and different areas of the nucleus, for example, the nuclear membrane and the nucleolus. You can see your mitochondria, you can see Golgi body, you can see endoplasmic reticulum, and you get a really good view of those organelles. Therefore, you can see that it is a disadvantage not having high magnification and having poor resolution because you cannot see all these structures using a light microscope. From this session, you should now be able to identify the need for microscopes. You should be able to describe the principles of a light microscope and you should be able to describe the limitations of light microscopy.